the final presentations moment is officially started now. Thanks everybody for joining the hackathon. Um, maybe just before we start the presentation, shall we just do a round of introductions just to make sure that everybody knows everybody? Who wants to start? Who's volunteering here? I can go. I am Andres from Argentina. I, I was part of the DPC canteen. Uh, that's it. Do you want to pick someone else, Andres, to present after you? <laughs> I I pick my last name, uh, same name, colleague Andre Amorim. Hello, everyone. I'm Andre, the PCCAN team from Brazil, Minas Gerais State. And who do you pick next, Andre? Gabriel. Hello everyone, Gabriel here from Brazil too. Uh, I I'm the PC Can team, and that's it. Let's see, August, August. Hi there, I'm Augusto, also from Brazil. I in this hackathon I haven't done much. <laughs> Unfortunately, but I I've been trying to set up a, a mirror of the community in Discord to Matrix so that people can also use elements and send messages back and forth. It's kind of working, but otherwise I'm really curious to see how the teams have progressed so far. Who do I pick up? Um, ba -ba -ba. Uh, Edgar. Hey. Hi. Uh, that's it's broken. I haven't. And I enjoy quite enjoyed the hackathon, but I was couldn't contribute too so much. I was used more to learn about the frictionless projects, live mark, the Python library. And yeah, the project in Brazil that I had no idea that it was going on, this uh, DP CCAN, the data package CCAN wrapper. And, but uh, I could work a little bit more on this, the COVID tracker with Epgeny. And yeah. And that's it from me. Let me see. It's not okay. Uh, Unaimo. Yeah, I can continue. Hello, I'm Precious Unaimo from Nigeria. I work on the community insight data analysis um, section. Um, well, I, I got to know of the hackathon a little bit late myself, but the good part was um, the, the, the team I joined were very um, engaging and um, it uh, kind of made us to do the, you know, we were able to do much. Not so much though, because we, I personally had to learn the Vega, Vega light um, visualization to keep almost um, all over. Unfortunately, I really couldn't do much with it, but I'm glad I, I joined the hackathon. Um, so it's quite nice, and um, I look forward to using the tools once. Better. All right, as it from me. Let me see who do I call. Um, um, Donas Gabriel. Is it me? Uh, yeah, Gabriel Donas. Oh, you've been called. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much. No <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Um, uh, Andre Morin. I'm Morin. I also be Andre. done. I think you're not oh, left with a lot of people's questions. <laughs> <one. laughs> <laughs> I think that so Evgeny, Lily. Daniel and I still need to go, right?
I can go. Um, I'm Sara Petty. I'm the community manager of frictionless data. Uh, I didn't work really on a project, but I was more like going around and see what was happening. Um, but it was great to see all these projects sort of like growing in these two days so fast. And I call Daniel. My microphone's off, right. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Daniel. I'm also from Brazil. Uh, this was my first hackathon and uh, also kind of my first pull request into a public GitHub repository and everything. I'm, I'm not a, a computer science student. Uh, I'm actually from communication, uh, but I, I, a few years ago, I decided to learn programming, just, you know, just curious and uh, uh, then I, I started uh, studying Python and everything, and uh, lately I was involved with some of the uh, Open Knowledge Foundation uh, projects, uh, a course actually about Python and civic innovation, and uh, someone in the, the Open Knowledge talked about the ha this hackathon, and I decided to join uh, to see how it, how it was, and it's fun. Nice to meet you. Etc. I think that there's only Eugenie. I don't know how it's pronounced, sorry. Yes, Eugenie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm Eugenie. I work at Open Knowledge and mostly on frictionless data. So at the hackathon, I was focused on COVID tracker project mostly. And also I was trying to resolve uh, like various Weimark issues because yeah, the software is quite young. So we had a lot. Lily. Thanks, Evgeny. I'm Lily. I'm the product manager for Frictionless Data at the Open Knowledge Foundation and at the hackathon, I split my time between the Community Insights Project and also worked on the COVID Tracker Project with Yevgeny. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to hear about some of the other projects. It looks like we've had some more people join. So I'm going to, for the new people, we're just briefly introducing ourselves um, and then pick somebody else. So I think we have Amarachi. Okay, hi everyone. Yes, I'm Amarachi from Nigeria. So um, I joined the hackathon because I wanted to, uh, I'm a web designer, a web developer, and I wanted to see how I could also use, um, use frictionless data for some of my tasks. Although I had a huge challenge throughout the hackathon because the support for Windows isn't you know, it's not really there. And I happen to have a Windows computer, but nonetheless, I still managed to learn something from my own. Thank you. Thanks, Amarachi. Um, Meirele, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself briefly? Hi, all. My name is Meirele. I'm a designer. I live in Rio de Janeiro. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks, Mirella. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, later. Okay, and I think we're just still missing Carolina, who just joined. Hi, C can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm not sure. going to start the video. My internet's not so good today. Okay, so. Hi, uh, so I'm from Brazil. I live in Florianópolis. Hello, I am a data scientist and I joined the hackathon in the project, uh, the data package manager for Secon. And yeah, that's it. That, this one was my first hackathon <laughs> and it was really fun. I had a lot of fun. So thank you. Thank you guys. That's it. I'm not sure if uh, should I point someone else? I think I was the last one, right? Yeah, I think everybody introduced okay. themselves. Yeah, okay. So 
I think that we can just go ahead with the project presentations. Um, who would like to go first? Yes, Andre. So can we go? Absolutely. Do you want to share your screen or something? Because I think that I need to. No, it will not be necessary. Okay, then go ahead. Okay. Hello, guys, again. I'm Andre. I am running the open data portal of Minas Gerais State here in Brazil with Gabriel and Francisco. One of the main responsibilities of our team is liaising with government departments that act as data custodians in order to advocate for the benefits of opening up the data. But most of the time, this is not a high priority project for those departments. Then altering high quality metadata has been difficult and time consuming, taking them too often, poorly formatted, difficult to search for, hard to understand, or simply completely absent. That's exactly where frictionless framework comes in. It provides a solid foundation to build a heavily automated publishing process that will result in an easier time for those who publish data. However, there's still a gap in the ecosystem. How to publish a data package in everyone's favorite data portal, CCAN? Data package manager for CCAN, CCAN is a tool for initial cataloging and especially incremental updates of data in CCAN. It allows the user to upload and update CCAN dataset and resources remotely from the command line outside the CCAN application. We demand two main issues for the frictionless hackathon, refine the package update functions and clean its documentation. The first one was creating a smart synchronization functionality to improve our data set update function. We needed something smart enough to ready the local data set with the most up-to-date information, compare the CCAN data set like a GIF tool and update only the changed data. This smart sync is important because of the size of many data sets, both in the number of resources and in storage. In this sense, a process that updates all the resources of a given data set may prove to be inefficient or even unfeasible, regardless of whether it has changed or not. And we almost finished it. Our colleague Andreas Vasquez created a very clean process to compare data sets, their resources, files, and indicates the, the changes that have been made. It will allow data publishers being sure that which resources and metadata properties have to be updated, saving time and efforts to validate only metadata changes and avoiding failure and wrong data publication. In this way, uh, we hope this process could help our project to guarantee open data quality. Talking now about documentation, we've improved, we've improved our documentation and even compared it with other tools. This is important to help new users to understand, install, and use the PC Cam. It has been doing with Carolina and Daniel. They helped us a lot with cleaning and translating the README file. Even they didn't know some tools we are using in our project, the result has been very great. This way, we believe the PC Cam docs will reach the purpose of being a gateway for new users and a reference for recurring users. At least this is part of our efforts to follow the principles of open government. We really believe that making public policies open by default can truly accelerate innovation and can improve the quality of government services. But without frictionless community, those achievements probably would not be possible. In two days, we improved our code so much. We only could reach it in an entire month of our regular workflow. So that we are very grateful to frictionless team for the opportunity to participate in this hackathon and also for using and contributing to frictionless toolkits. Thanks, Andre, and thanks to the whole DPC can team. 
who goes next? I guess we can go. Um, can I share my screen, Zara? Oh, I think I can. I created a little presentation for my group, but uh, Precious or Amarachi, if you wanna speak, please unmute um, or I'll ask you again if you wanna speak as well. Okay, can you see this? Is it black? It's black on my side. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I'm representing Frictionless Community Insights team, who is Precious, Amarachi, Khalid, myself, and Yevgeny. Our main goal was to create a live mark site that tells a story about the frictionless community. So we were using data from the recent community survey. So thank you to everybody that had taken that survey. Um, so our main goals for this hackathon were to clean the data, visualize the data, and display the data as a story on the website. The outcomes were that Precious cleaned the data, so thank you for that. Um, Precious and Khalid worked on visualizing the data. Amarachi worked on styling the site, and as she mentioned, found a really important bug about the Windows installation, so that's really helpful. Um, Yevgeny provided technical help and I was project manager. So I wanna show you some of the visualizations that Khalid and Precious were able to do. And here are the links for these, which are in the um, hackathon channel as well, if you wanna look at them later. But I'll just show you two examples. So this was one that Khalid did that was looking at um, where community members are in different countries. And this is kind of like a interactive visualization shows um, you, this is the United States, this is Switzerland and Brazil are the most popular countries. Um, this is a pretty small sample size of data. So if you have not taken the community survey, you can still take it. Uh, and then here's an example that Precious did, which is showing how long people have used frictionless data crossed with what language they use. Um, so this is showing, sorry, it's a little blurry, um, this is Python and R, I think. And then this is uh, how long you've used frictionless data. It's a little blurry, but you can look at the link to see it in more detail. So these are two great examples of the kind of information that we're trying to learn about our users. And so the next steps are to convert these visualizations into Vega Lite so we can put them on the LiveMark site. Um, and then the question, are there other ways to analyze the data? Are there other things we wanna display? And then to add more text to the site. So with that, I just wanna say a really big thank you to the team. And then also see if Precious or Amarachi wanna say anything about this. Um, may I go first? Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much, Lily. For, uh, you really did, did a very wonderful, did a wonderful job managing the team and, and the right So, Thumbs up for that. Okay. Um, it, please let me bring up my slide, my visualization. Let me. Okay. Hold on, let me try and find it again. I lost it. Okay, no, no, no bother. Let me just um okay. Um basically what, what the chat is about is we, we needed to know uh, which programming language is using the frictionless uh tool. So um that will help us to know how to better prepare um the tool to manage the audience and what we need to do for the other uh, programming language users to encourage them to use uh, the tool. So 
So from the visual, visualization, it was very evident that Python users are more of the heavy users of the application. Um, there was another slide there. Yeah, we find out that Python users even use the tool for a longer period of time compared to to to, to, to other users. So that means um, the tool have actually won the heart of the Python audience. So uh, we could um, gradually, while we encourage, while we try to maintain our Python audience, we could as well still look for ways of encouraging other users like. Um, uh, the Java community, the JavaScript community, how we can bring them on board so that they can use this tool because it's it's lightweight, so that should make it um, appealing to to programmers because if there's anything programmers um, shy away from, they are bulky tools that uh, take so much time to to learn and use. But with frictionless um, tool, it is lightweight and it's very easy to use. So. Um, that gives us room to encourage much more people to come on board and use this tool. And of course, it will give them very wonderful, clean um, uh, visualization. So thanks to the team, and uh, I'm glad, I'm happy to be part of the, the community insight. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to in data analysis and you don't really use um, JavaScript um, that much in data analysis. So you tend to get people looking more towards the uh, um, live map from the Python side. So as I mentioned earlier, when I was introducing myself, um, one of the things I would want on Frictionless to do is to give a good support for uh, Windows so that, uh, because really it's not everybody that uses Mac. Like I know around here, I really don't know anyone who has so that, you know, more diverse people can have the opportunity to work on it because right now I can only input my changes directly on GitHub or it's not easy to preview and see what I'm doing directly and it makes it really, really hard when the time works. So, but thanks um, really for putting everything together. Um, it was really awesome. Thank you, um, Precious. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Amarasu. Thanks, Lily and Precious, also for the presentation and for your words. Uh, do we have another project that needs to present? Yep, they can go next. Yes, go ahead, Evgeny. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, my team was uh, Lily, um, Edgar, and I, and. Uh, uh, honestly, saying uh, probably we haven't like accomplished a lot of um, ready to wait a second ready to share like end user results during the hackathon, but um, we got some stuff that we can uh, convert into the like into real site in a few days and. Uh, Probably the, it will make sense if I uh, focus on the project itself for now. So let me share my screen. Um, can you see? Yes. Yeah, cool. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, the project is uh, the COVID, uh, yet another COVID tracker. And it was created uh, to um, try Wiremark on some like middle-sized data journalism um, example. So to try, because Wiremark uh, had been created a few months ago and it's uh, really young and uh, it's uh, not really tested as yeah, it was mentioned already. So um, the idea was to have a like real world example of creating like charts, uh, tables, and the I I uh, decided to go with like some um, really um, like actual thing because uh, there are a lot of uh, good data about COVID, good data sets, and I used uh, our work on data uh, COVID data set, which is really great and good quality. And also um, research about excess mortality by 
uh, Dmitry Kobak and Karlinski published in life lately. It's also really interesting, like even like not regarding to frictions, you can take a look if you're interested. There is a link uh, on the COVID tracker. Um, so, I'll share the link. That's why Mark uh, helps uh, you to create like a site. It's not super like fancy looking, but a normal site, uh, mostly like text, text, so uh, like uh, approach of uh, presenting information, but it's uh, full functional. And the idea that you just write markdown and uh, uh, almost always writing just markdown, adding to markdown some uh, additional elements, and you are able to uh, get a, like some uh, data journalism or documentation or educational content, just uh, almost without uh, any programming skills. So, um, yeah, what I added to the COVID tracker is like standard data uh, that you can find uh, on other trackers, like uh, time, uh, timeline of that new cases, vaccinations, um, some uh, combined numbers. There are uh, the same information for different regions. And you can, uh, I think uh, the Europe is, uh, is not really right, but okay, we will fix it. Um, you can take a look on uh, regions, uh, uh, separation and uh, use like uh, sortable tables, or it uh, also presented uh, by country. And uh, it's uh, interactive and also you can uh, click on countries and get uh, reports for different countries. Like Brazil, you're welcome. Um, so the, what might be interesting uh, and not uh, like the same as in on other trackers, I added, as I mentioned, uh, the excess mortality information. So the thing that in some countries, uh, COVID reporting is not really accurate for different reasons. And uh, at least uh, I know it uh, really well for Russia that uh, there is a, a really like big uh, uh, difference in uh, like mortality based on um, official registration of deaths and COVID mortality that report to uh, the uh, World Health Organization. And uh, if you take a look, just talking about Russia, but you can find like uh, other countries like this, uh, that uh, uh, it's seen that uh, like official information is like much less dead than in reality. So if you can see here, it's uh, like much more dead than on the like official information map. So, and also there are the uh, rolling immunity um, report that was uh, my try to um, analyze uh, why like countries like Israel that uh, had been like vaccinated almost completely got these uh, outbreaks. And uh, um, the idea that um, that uh, immunity and it's been measured by antibodies uh, uh, um, uh, tests like decreases over time. So uh, I, I can like say just on even like personally that my wife had it like a year ago and her antibodies uh, were like going down like almost completely in a year. So uh, 
if you try thinking about uh, immunity as uh, something um, temporal, you can uh, like uh, create this model called I call it rolling immunity, and see uh, like what the difference between, for example, Israel who got really quick vaccination and uh, like UK or Germany that didn't like get into the situation when all uh, sick and vaccinated people were like half a year ago and at some point they kind of like in my opinion lost uh, their uh, uh, like rolling immunity as, as I call it uh, and got this uh, outbreak again so let's see what will happen next also you can uh, check uh, the same report for other countries and like think whether it works in your opinion or not. And uh, yeah, so for the hackathon, we was able to um, add this important column to excess mortality because uh, the reporting is not really, uh, it doesn't like happen really often. so. It's important to understand when uh, the uh, the number was reported, and the second part of the hackathon work was uh, led by Edgar, and he created a correlation table. So it shows uh, correlations between different uh, fields of the of the of this table. But uh, it's a, a simplified version, but there is a full version. And our idea is to create a new article here and uh, present this data and, for example, check whether uh, maybe uh, GDP per capita uh, correlates with a uh, vaccination rate or maybe like human uh, development index uh, with like that uh, per million, etc. So yeah, it will be uh, both like available as interactive uh, thing for users to try different correlations and we probably provide some our ideas. Yeah, sorry, I think uh, <laughs> it took slightly more longer than was expected. Sarah? Yes, that's fine, Evgeny. It was great to see that. Thanks for the presentation. Um, so before I share the link for voting, maybe Lily wanted to say a few words about the frictionless tutorials team, which sadly cannot be here because the connection is not working very well for them. Yeah, and Evgeny, yeah, you're still sharing your screen. You want to turn that off? Thanks for the presentation so far, y'all. Um, so I just wanted to mention, do a shout out for the tutorials team who worked really hard to create, I think two new tutorials. And they also created um, some information about how to write a tutorial, which will be really, really helpful for us going forward. So the team is Miriam and Myrele, and Myrele was here earlier, but had to uh, got kicked off. So um, I just want to thank them for doing that work. And I think that they had a good time, hopefully. Um, yeah, and hopefully the the information that they did will be on GitHub soon. So that everybody can look at that too. Yeah, maybe I can okay, share one of the tutorials. I think that I don't remember, but one of the team, one of the team members shared with us late. So uh, you can have a look if you want. Um, just to have more information before voting. So I just shared it in the chat. And what I will do now is that I will share a link with you uh, through which you can vote for the best project. You will see it now. Uh, I think the idea was to have the voting happening only in this session today, but because so many people are having, are having connection issues 
we thought that we might leave the voting open for a bit longer so that they also get a chance to uh, to vote for their favorite project. Basically, just go ahead and yeah, vote for your favorite project. Don't vote for yourself. <laughs> I feel like maybe you could vote for yourself. <laughs> I vote for my team member. <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry, that was my dog, in case y'all heard that. <laughs> um, anything else, Sarah? Do you want to um, conclude? Not, yes, not really. So I was planning to announce the winner today, but we're going to do that uh, in the next couple of days, probably by Monday. Um, I want to thank you all again for joining the Hackathon. It was really great to have you here and to see also some live action on Frictionless from so many people with different ideas and everything. Um, so yeah, just thank you. I really hope that you had a great time. One thing that I want to share with you is that um, I'll send you an email later uh, with a survey um, just for you to give us some feedback about the hackathon, what we could do better. It's our first hackathon. We are maybe planning to do more. So we would really like to know what you liked and what you didn't like so that we can, we can make it better next time. Um, I think that's it from my side. Do you, Lily and Evgeny, want to add anything? Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that participated. Um, also, it's still my morning, so I'll be around online for the rest of the day in case anybody has any follow-up or any questions that you want answered. Um, I think otherwise, Sarah said that she can leave some of the team channels open in Discord if you want to keep doing that. Mm, yeah, I think that's it. I'm just really appreciative of everybody that joined and I hope everybody has a really great rest of your Friday. Yes. Have a frictionless Friday, everyone. Yes. Thanks, Andres. <laughs> <laughs>